What types of things are you guys seeing in here? Damselflies. So we've got some damselflies. We've got quite a few damselflies up here. What else? Crayfishes. We've got crayfish. So depending on the different species we see or how many of them, we can decide if they're rare or common species. Then do some simple math to come up with a figure to tell if, it's, if our river quality is high, if it's excellent, or maybe if it's on the poor end. Northeast Michigan is extremely rich in Great Lakes and natural resources. and. Uh, through this network, uh, we have the opportunity to foster relationships between school and community partners, uh, really uh, with the purpose of supporting teachers and engaging students in caring about these uh, important resources uh, for our communities. We in our class, we made an ROV it's a, a robot that goes underwater for research and we're doing it to see if the rusty crayfish's um, population is going up or low. We are hoping that the rusty crayfish population will go down is because the rusty crayfish is overpowering um, the other crayfish. Research shows, you know, if you can get students actively engaged in the classroom, you can increase content retention by 75 percent. So this is, you know, the way that I get my students involved with and in, active in the classroom is we do research projects like this. So that way when we have to come back and we're in the classroom and we're doing the normal classroom routine stuff, you know, they're engaged because they know what's going on and they know there's, there's a reason for doing it. So when we come to a place like this and they're working with uh, biologists like Angie Bowen and she's talking math and she's talking about collecting averages and, and making assumptions based on data and then we go back in the classroom and we pull out the textbook and the textbook is asking us to do that. They've got an immediate connection to the real world and they're automatically drawn in because they know it has a purpose and it's useful. So we're basically going to be taking the lengths and the weights of the zebra mussels that you've collected here on this rock and we'll be comparing that data to past years of data that we've collected from the same place and from similar rocks in that area. We were an early partner with the Northeast Michigan Great Lakes Stewardship Initiative and uh, it ties in really well or unites well with our Connecting People with Nature initiative. So we're really glad to be able to be here and help these kids learn about natural resources issues. Um, if they can learn about natural resources issues now, that's going to make them a better educated adult and also better able to be a good steward of the land. There's no way I'd be able to do this project on my own without my community partners, without Michigan Sea Grant, without the Great Lakes Stewardship Initiative, without NOAA, the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, or the Alpena Fisheries Research Station. None of this would happen without them because they're there, they're here helping me do research, they're helping us collect data. I'm not the research expert, they are and so they allow us to use them to build our research models so that way it's usable to the, the research community. We made this poster about rusty crayfish so that people can be aware that rusty crayfish are bad and that we need to get rid of them. Because of creating these posters, I think people are more aware of invasive species now. Today we're going to test dissolved oxygen. Can someone tell me why we're going to test for dissolved oxygen? Many teachers are afraid to step out and get involved with place-based education because they're going into an area that they're not familiar with, that it's not their area of expertise. And our GLSI hub is able to bring those resources to them so that teachers don't have to be an expert. They just have to be willing to take their kids out into the field. You guys are going to help me with a very important project. Uh, what we're going to do today is we are going to explore Thompson's Harbor State Park. We are going to tromp around in some of the wetlands, explore the dunes, uh, look uh, in the cobble here on this limestone cobble beach, and we are going to look uh, to observe and document the biodiversity that this park is, is so well known for. We're going to take pictures, we're going to collect uh, notes and observations, and you guys are going to capture stuff in your mind that you'll take back to your class and use in developing your report on these rare threatened and endangered species. We basically wrote about what we see and everybody did it on a different species and all of the, all the species that everyone wrote about were endangered. Um, a lot of us wrote about birds, some of us wrote about plants. We had to write about the characteristics to 
behavior, the reproduction, the diet, the nesting, the environment, and all everything like that. The reports that we wrote are going to be put into the cabins here at Thompson's Harbor State Park for the guests to read, and so they can be informed about the, um, the endangered species that are out here. One of the challenges of uh, successfully accomplishing place-based education is, is really getting communities uh, to understand uh, what's going on in schools, the needs of schools, and how to approach schools. On the flip side, helping schools understand uh, how to take their students out into the community, how to uh, engage in, in real community issues. And one of the uh, values of our regional network is being able to bridge that school community partnership where uh, we create partnerships that can really be beneficial to both. Schools can enhance their students' learning experience through place-based education, and communities uh, can really leverage these students as valued uh, community partners. Getting a whole classroom of extra hands out in the field to take on a project is, is a much more exciting opportunity to a field researcher than trying to do that same project on their own. See this big, huge patch of all this tall Phragmites. It's a grass that can grow up to 17 feet tall, and it gets so dense that you can't even walk through it. And you can see that it's kind of spreading out. There are all these little pieces on the ground. One of the things that we do is monitor the invasive species occurrences up and down the shoreline. And so in partnering with these students to help us take all these measurements out in their communities, it helps them invest and care about what is going on in their community while getting us the valuable data that we can then use to help clean up the beaches and get rid of invasive species along the shoreline. If you count how many stems are in there, in that square, and your quarters will write it down. Two, three, four, five. Sixth graders, raise your hand if you're in the beach group. You're going to be picking up litter, wearing gloves. What's it really important we keep track of? The data. The data. We'll be making a tally mark for every piece of trash that you pick up. When we're all done, you'll get our spring scale. You'll find the mass of all your trash, and then we'll compile it when we get back to the classroom to see the class total. We got some pretty shocking results from some of the, like, the litter pickup we did and stuff. We found a lot of cigarettes and a lot of trash and um, we wanted to help our beaches get cleaner. So my teacher and me and four others, we went and we decided to go to a city council meeting and present about what we did and ways to help. I was a little nervous at first that they might not like really like they wouldn't really care because we were just kids and everything and then they actually listened and we had the mayor come into our classroom and he talked to us about it and he said that we had some pretty good ideas. We're a rural area and have limited opportunities for many of our students. And place-based education has opened the door and has encouraged many students to stay in school and to pursue careers in environmental education and in Great Lakes stewardship. So it just really opened the eyes of so many of our students who didn't believe there were opportunities that they could achieve. What we have in here is the little brown bat. Uh, it's a small animal, it's only seven to eight grams. That's about a quarter of an ounce. Uh, there's maybe 100, 150 that we have in here right now. This is an important site from a conservation perspective because it allows us to preserve habitat for these bats. I grew up thinking bats are bad for you. Why, why should we care about them? Bats uh, do humans a, a lot of good. They do pollinate plants, they do disseminate seeds and, and allow forests to grow. And many bats uh, around the world are insect eaters. The bat gates that we're putting in and installing at Rockport uh, State Park here is to help protect the uh, bats that are hibernating here during the, the tunnels here. And it helps to keep the people out so they don't interfere with their hibernation aspects of the, uh, of the bats during the winter time. Um, the kids at the Alpena High School welding class has designed and built the, uh, the gates that went into these uh, holes in order to do that. The back gate has to fit so we had to take a lot of measurements um, with dimensions and angles to make the gate fit properly and open properly so it took a lot of time to design it and then actually fabricate it and make it. 
You know, this is real life education. When you ever have a chance or the opportunity to bring students together with so many great agencies, whether it's Fish and Wildlife or the DNR, to a wonderful site like this, and really not only make a difference for what's going on in our community, but make a difference for the wildlife that's here. And to be able to have our career and technical education students build uh, something that really is going to give them ownership and the ability to buy into this community. Really, they're the future and they're helping place it back in their hands so they can control it and help save and protect it for the future. Place-based education offers a great opportunity to cross-connect uh, students across multiple grade levels. Uh, if you think in Northeast Michigan about the experience of one student in Alpena schools, uh, as an elementary student, those students are building underwater robots to explore their aquatic environments. Um, they're taking on uh, research projects around an important issue of invasive species. That same student moves on to the junior high uh, where they're out uh, conducting a beach cleanup, uh, 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 taking water quality samples of the beach. And by high school, those same students are out mapping shipwrecks with the National Marine Sanctuary and contributing to conservation habitat restoration projects with Fish and Wildlife Service and the Department of Natural Resources. If I were a student in Alpena El schools, I'd be pretty excited about uh, my life from kindergarten to high school having had that experience. We are here today to map the Joseph Fay, the shipwreck Joseph Fay. Who knows uh, what we have to do first? Here, measure from the baseline to here, then measure from the baseline to here so that you can draw. My class is called Shipwreck Alley, Shipwreck Science in the Marine Sanctuary. We try to cover all aspects of Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary from what causes shipwrecks to how they study them archaeologically and then we even go beyond that to look at the ecology of the lakes and things that are changing and affecting the lakes. It hits home for me because my dad's a sailor and so I've grown up around the lakes and boats and um, with all the storms my dad's been in I get to learn about why the storms occur and why shipwrecks happen and how to prevent them. The students are learning earth science but they're also doing archaeology. What they're doing out here has math applications, which then turn into art applications, all of which can then solve archaeology questions and take you back to the history books to learn more. So it all fits together in a real world way. You're going to go walk to the baseline and measure off of that. We should probably get the outer edges first since we're working our way to the detail. I tell a lot of people about what I get to do and the things I learn in class and it's kind of a shock for them because not many of them know much about the shipwrecks or what NOAA does and it kind of opens their eyes and a lot of people start to get interested into it and do further research. The community benefits from my Shipwreck Alley class because these students when they leave they're able to go out and be advocates for preserving the Great Lakes and preserving the shipwrecks and they understand that the sanctuary brings value to the community by telling these stories and encouraging us all to take better care of what we have in our own backyard. My biggest advantage is the fact that our young students are now bringing this out and they're studying it. They're telling their parents and neighbors about it. They're bringing awareness to the community. So when we're down in Lansing or in Washington passing legislation to protect our Great Lakes, they've already done the background work of uh, educating the community and now we could just bring what they have found forth and move legislation to protect our Great Lakes. I think as we look at uh, our state budget, you know, education is a, is a large part of that, but when you consider that one of our goals is to improve science, technology, engineering, and math funding for our students, when you see the hands-on learning that's taking place here, it certainly is valuable to invest in this kind of project-based learning that really makes science come alive for these students. The students are learning uh, classroom standards and, and benchmarks that in a real life way that will enhance their test scores and so you know when you think about a legislature that wants to invest in education and our young people and to see the improvements that will occur because they're applying uh, this real life knowledge uh, that's a tremendous asset for our entire state.